Hey guys, my name is Carrie. Uh, in July of 2022, I solo hiked the Salcante Trek in Peru. It was a three night, four day trek. And in this next section of the video, I hope to help you in doing something similar. I think with this hike, most people end up finishing at Machu Picchu. I did not buy my ticket in advance. Uh, I was hoping to arrive and be able to get up to Machu Picchu a few days after I arrived to Aguas Calientes, uh, but that didn't happen. Uh, they, uh, they were sold out for the entire week, and uh, I think the next week I was reading that they were sold out for like two weeks in advance. So don't be like me thinking that you may show up <laughs> to Aguas Calientes and, and be able to get up to Machu Picchu within a day or two. Uh, especially in the high season, uh, make sure you book uh, in advance, uh, potentially two to three weeks ahead of time. Other than missing out on Machu Picchu, I really enjoyed this trek. Uh, it was diverse with the alpine sections uh, leading to Salcante and then uh, all the rainforest as you head towards uh, Aguas Calientes. Okay guys, I'm gonna use all trails uh, to go over uh, transportation to and from the trail and show you some of the days uh, on the trail as well. Uh, so the Salcante Trek uh, is at least all trail shows about a 42-43 mile point-to-point uh, -point trek uh, with around a little over uh, about 11,000 and a half feet of elevation gain. The uh, trek uh, starts near Cusco um, but a lot of people will end up you know, flying first to Lima, then taking a flight over to Cusco. I think you can take a bus. Uh, it's a long way there, but certainly it's possible. Um, but the uh, the day of though, uh, getting to the trail, um, I was staying in Cusco, and there is a place, sort of a north uh, or so of the historical central uh, area. Um, there is a bus or colectivo spot right here um, for a little town called Molepata. So I caught that colectivo there and we drove over. It feels like around three hours or so. Total cost was, I think, something like maybe two to three dollars uh, for that collect uh, Tivo ride. Uh, and it dropped me off right here, um, Molipata, from there to here. And then from there, uh, there's plenty of people um, with, uh, with taxis. Uh, so you could, yeah, there's plenty of taxi drivers, so you're able to catch a taxi and then they can take you up further up here and drop you off. Uh, right here at the start of the, the, the hike. Um, this drive may have been around an hour, maybe less. Um, total cost for that, I don't remember exactly. It's probably uh, $6, $7, but I can't remember exactly on that one. Uh, but yeah, I started around uh, noon or so uh, on that first day, and the uh, First day, I ended up stopping up here at the lake. So it was around, probably around a five mile or so uh, first day, somewhere around noon to lay a four thirty, somewhere something like that, five o'clock. Um, hardest part of the first day is going up this stretch. This is a pretty steep um, elevation uh, gain here, and it just keeps going and going. So it's it's a lot of gain. Um, in a short period of time, doesn't look that bad on all trails, um, but yeah, you probably gain what feels like at least you know a couple thousand feet, maybe two thousand feet. Uh, but anyways, um, that first night, this is a nice area. I got there late, so the sun was kind of really not really showing on the the top here, uh, the peak of this mountain, but. Um, I would suggest, if I would have done it differently, I would have liked to have arrived here around midday. I think I would have had better um, better sunlight. I think would have been able to get a little better drone uh, footage from this spot. But yeah, I arrived here 
late afternoon. There's quite a few people here at this this lagoon. It's a pretty popular tourist spot. Um, and then I slept that night um, somewhere in this this area. Um, so after I think five, everybody left, and I put my tent there, and then woke up early and put the drone up for the first time. Kind of shot around this area. Um, and then yeah, so that was the first day. Second day was down, down, down from the lake. And then you basically just, this is somewhat flat through here. You're gaining a little bit of elevation, but not bad. And then you really start climbing through this section until uh, somewhere in this area uh, is, the, is the, the pass. Um, then you get nice views of Salkante here. Um, so this is a nice spot. Um, and yeah, the, the second day will be the hardest with this ele elevation gain. But really from there, it's all downhill the, the rest of the day. Um, so for me, my second day was starting at the lake and then walking down to this spot here. Um, so probably about midday there and then the rest of the way is down down and you start kind of getting towards the some more greener areas here where you have some rainforest covering the the mountains the the slopes here um this section was was pretty nice um i didn't like uh there's a lot of uh, horses and donkeys mules that kind of thing so they kick up a lot of dust because there really are lots of people that do this trek so coming down wasn't too fun at times um, and then from here, once I got down to here, I was thinking about maybe trying to stay in this area. Most places seem full. I saw this lodge on all trails, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll go walk and see if that's open. So I walked down and up, and, uh, but this was, this lodge is not, was not open, uh, when I was there. Um, so not quite sure if that's, well, it certainly wasn't worth it, obviously, to go <laughs> down and up. To check but I did end up staying right down here though um, at this spot near near here I think uh, there was a local that was renting out some campsites camp spaces at, on her uh, property there um, can't see it at all here at the moment but yeah there'll be places to stay here and in this area too. So uh, that was the second day. Woke up to the sound of uh, lots of roosters in this little community here. And then I made my way down the road, main road. And then eventually you get off the main road and you cross the little river here. And then really that, that, that start of that third day uh, was really beautiful. You get to kind of walk along the the path of the you know then the rivers down below it's green lots of different plants lots of bird species yeah this is a really nice section of the of the Salkante trek um, so that third day went from here down all the way and then I believe right down here maybe right here uh, I was able to get some lunch and then continue on, and then here you're gonna start climbing a bit again. Um, this section was nice, but it was pretty hot that day, and you are pretty exposed to sun here, so that was warm. And uh, you're really, you know, somewhere around 6,000. Elevation isn't bad, but you do gain maybe something around 2,500, 3,000 feet. So there is quite a bit of climbing there. And then uh, that third campsite for me was right, I believe right in this area. Once you kind of come up the, the very highest point, come down a bit, uh, there's some areas to sleep. Um, so I set up my tent. Place wasn't open, but it had these kind of neat uh, uh, sort of cabin uh, cabins to sleep in. Um, 
So I think a lot of people will end up staying maybe at this Lactopata spot. That's also a nice place to stay. Um, but I stayed up a little, a little from that. And really you have a nice view looking this way to where you see Mach Machu Picchu uh, up top here um, in the distance. So that's kind of neat to be able to camp up here and see across. Uh, let me see if I can uh, kind of spin it around here. But it's something like that, that kind of view from here to there. And uh, yeah, anyway, the fourth day was this kind of a half day like the first where I made my way down this section and then you reach uh, a bridge where you cross the river here and then kind of make your way around and then you arrive to uh, a place where you can get uh, some food and different things uh, along the, the rail railway, the tracks here. Um, so I grabbed a little breakfast and uh, made my way, continued on. And then from there, really, it's just uh, kind of following the train tracks um, back all the way, kind of a looping around here to where you get to the um, Aguas Calientes uh, little, well, I guess little, but it's a kind of a bigger touristy, um, well, of course, Machu Picchu is here. So yeah, anyway, lots of tourists right down here. Uh, that was sort of a half day though, um, going from kind of the top, let's say, so yeah, maybe somewhere around a, a 10 mile day, something like that. Um, probably from like uh, 6.30 or so, seven to, to around uh, noon, early afternoon. Uh, then from there I tried to uh, see if I could get a ticket from Machu Picchu for the next day or the following, uh, but they were sold out like I mentioned. So really once I arrived down uh, let me see if I can adjust this here. See, so yeah, like I said, you just follow around, you follow the train tracks, and then this becomes a, a road here that you just follow to the main uh, Machu Picchu Pueblo here, Aguas Calientes. Um, but yeah, I, I grabbed some food here, and then, uh, then took a train. Uh, so I arranged for a train and a car to get back um, to Cusco. Um, so let me spin this around here again. Um, so Cusco is right here again. So pretty much there. Should have the cost on this, but I think it was around $40, somewhere, something like that, to then take a train. It was a nice train ride, but we did have to wait a couple, like what felt like an hour or two before we left, like in the train. Um, but. Yeah, the train kind of comes through here, then you arrive to this spot right here. Right there is where the train stops. And then you get back, you get into like a little sprinter van, and it takes you all back to Cusco. Uh, there are collectivos also here, so I may have been able to save some money just getting the train ticket and then arranging transportation once I arrived here back to Cusco. Uh, might have saved me a few dollars. If you have any questions uh, about this uh, trek, I'm happy to help. Uh, please leave a comment down below or I can be uh, messaged on my Instagram. Uh, I have, uh, I've done several hikes now in Peru and uh, happy to help if I can. Next up is uh, Europe, guys. I'm super excited. I've never been to Europe before, so I head to France uh, pretty soon here. Uh, so I'll be doing the Tour de Mont Blanc and then head over uh, and do Picos de Europa in Spain. And then I'm also trying to get to the uh, GR20 in Corsica. So I have uh, hopefully some good videos coming out of Europe. Uh, I'm super excited. Uh, so look forward to co those coming out later this year. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later.